Hello my dear friends now we are going into the chapter chapter 3 in the NCERT textbook class 11 plant kingdom okay let's see into a very deep aspect of the plant kingdom and its classification okay so follow me line by line if you have the same NCERT book keep aside and you mark it with the pencil or the pen so if you can follow it will be a better understanding okay my dear friends let's go into the topic the plant kingdom In previous chapter we looked at the broad classification of living organisms under the system proposed by Whitaker in the year 1969 wherein he suggested the five kingdom classification via Monera, Protista, Fungi, Animalia and Plantae. In this chapter we will deal in detail with further classification within kingdom Plantae popularly known as plant kingdom we must stress here that our understanding of the plant kingdom has changed over time fungi and other members of monera protista have cell walls have now been excluded from the plantae previously it was included in the plant plant kingdom only nothing but the fungi monera and protista but now we have separated from the plant kingdom in the whitaker system of five system of classification so earlier classifications placed them in the same kingdom but later it considered that the cell wall is made up of different types of material when it comes to plant kingdom it is made up of cellulose so the cyanobacteria that are referred to as blue green algae or not algae actually anymore in this chapter we will describe the algae bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms under plantae so these are the things we are going to discuss in detail in this chapter let us also look at classification within angiosperms to understand some of the concerns that influenced the classification system the earliest systems of classification used only gross superficial morphological characters such as habitat color number and shapes of leaves etc they were based mainly on vegetative characters or on the andrisium structures system given by linnaeus such systems are artificial they separated the closely related species since they were based on few characteristics okay also the artificial system gave equal weightage to the vegetative and sexual characteristics it is not acceptable since we know that often vegetative characters are more easily affected by environment as against this natural classification system was developed which were based on natural affinities among the organisms and consider not only the external features but also the internal features like ultra structure anatomy embryology and phytochemistry nothing but plant chemistry such as classification for flowering plants were given by george bentham and joseph dalton hooker so even the classification of pl flowering plants at present the phylogenetic classification system based on evolutionary relationship between the various organisms are acceptable means how the organism how the plants has evolved this assumes that organisms belong to the same taxa have a common ancestors from this concept we now use the information from many other sources to help resolve the difficulties in classification these become more important when there are no supporting fossil evidence so this phylogenetic way of classification will support more more if we don't have a fossil evidence numerical taxonomy which is now easily carried out using computers based on all observable characters number and codes are assigned to all the characters and data are then processed in this way each character is given importance at the same time hundreds of the characters can be considered like uh, it will differentiate and segregate with the help of computer like the segregation will be very easy so how many characters will be common for this plant in this taxa how many characters are common or between this plants how many characters are common cytotaxonomy means cell 
it is based on cytological information like chromosomal number structure behavior so like it will characterize uh, it will categorize whatever the organisms or the plants which will comes under same number of chromosomes or same number of same type of endoplasmic reticulum like this type of uh, classification or taxonomy we call it as cytotaxonomy it is based on cytological information like chromosomal number structure behavior and chemotaxonomy finally they use the chemical constituents of the plants to resolve the confusion or also used by the taxonomist these days so let's see about algae algae will comes under plant kingdom not the blue green algae we have to remind that blue green algae will comes under bacteria algae will comes under plant kingdom this are the true algae algae are chlorophyll bearing simple thalloid thalloid means small bud like thalloid autotrophic means it can prepare its own food are uh, and largely aquatic both freshwater and marine marine organisms they occur in a variety of other habitats moist stones soil and wood some of them also occur in association with fungi which we call it as lichens so it uh, it is also used as a pollution indicators and animals example on sloth bear the algae will be grown on the sloth bear to form the size of the algae the form and size of algae are is highly variable ranging from colonial forms like volvox and the filamentous form like lutrox lotrix lotrix and spirogyra a few of the marine forms such as kelps forms the massive plant bodies the algae reproduce by vegetative asexual and sexual methods vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation each fragment will develop into a thallus thallus means like a plate like structure thallus asexual reproduction is by the production of different types of spores the most common being is juice spores they are flagellated motile because of that we call it as juice spores and on germination gives rise to new plant sexual reproduction takes place through the fusion of two gametes whenever we are talking about sexual reproduction it should be the union of two gametes or the two members then only we call it as sexual reproduction these gametes can be flagellated and similar in size as in eulothrix and non flagellated or non motile but similar in size in spirogyra such reproduction we call it as isogamous means having same size of gametes fusion of two gametes dissimilar in size and in species of eudorhina is termed as anisogamous fusion between one large non motile female gamete and smaller motile male gamete is termed as oogamous like for example volvox and fucus and next algae algae are useful to man in a variety of ways at least half of the total carbon dioxide fixation on earth is carried out by the algae this is very very important point to be noted in competitive exams through photosynthesis being photosynthetic they increase the level of dissolved oxygen in their immediate environment they are of para amount importance as the primary producers of energy rich compounds which form the basis of food cycles of all aquatic animals algae is the major thing many species of porphyra laminaria sargassum are among the 70 species of marine algae used as food for the fishes certain marine brown and red algae produce large amount of hydrocolloids nothing but water holding substances example algin brown algae and cara sorry caragin which is red algae which is used commercially for agar one of the commercial product to obtain gelidium and gracilaria is used to grow the microbes and for the preparation of ice creams and jellies whenever you remind about ice cream and jellies you please remind about algin and caragin nothing but brown algae and red algae chlorella 
or the unicellular rna rich in proteins is used as a food supplement even by space travelers okay so chlorella so this also we have to note down by the space travelers so the algae are divided into three main classes chlorophycia pheophycia and rhodophycia so let's see about chlorophycia the members of chlorophycia are commonly called green algae chloro so obviously the name itself says it is green algae the plant body it may be unicellular colonial or filamentous they are usually grass green due to dominance of pigment of chlorophyll a and b the pigments are localized in definite chloroplast the chloroplast may be discoid plate like so disc disc like shape plate like reticulate which means net like shape cup shape spiral or ribbon shaped in different species most of the members have one or more storage bodies called pyrenoids located in the chloroplast the pyrenoids contain a protein beside the starch some algae may store the food in a form of oil droplets so because of that the algae will be slightly greasy in nature also green algae usually have a rigid cell wall made up of inner layer of cellulose and outer layer of pectose so the vegetative reproduction usually takes place by fragmentation or by the formation of different type of spores asexual reproduction is by flagellated juice spores produced in juice sporangia the sexual reproduction shows considerable variation in the type of formation of sex cells and it may be isogamous anisogamous or oogamous we have already discussed priorly isogamous means same si shape size of gametes anisogamous means different sizes in the gametes oogamous means so it will be larger egg and sperm like that we call it as oogamous some commonly found green algae are chlamydomonas volvox ulothrix spirogyra and chara okay let's see pheophycia the members of pheophycia or brown algae are found primarily in marine habitats so you can see the brown colored on the rocks also they show a great variation in size and form they range from simple branched filamentous form ectocarpus to profusely branched forms as represented by kelps which may reach a height of 100 meters you can see this brown color thing in the underwater also this we called it as kelps which is very famous they possess the chlorophyll a and c carotenoids and xanthophylls because of that only it is brown in color they vary in color from olive green to various shades of brown depending upon the amount of xanthophyll pigment fucoxanthin present in them food is stored as a complex carbohydrate which may be in the form of laminaria or mannitol so the vegetative cells have a cellulosic cell wall used usually covered on the outside by a gelatinous coat called algin the protoplast contain so algin because of that only it is sticky and slimy in nature the algae so protoplast contain in addition to the plastids a centrally located vacuole and nucleus the plant body is usually attached to the substratum by the hold fast and has a stalk so if with the stalk only it can attach and stipe and a leaf like photosynthetic organ the frond the vegetative reproduction takes place by fragmentation asexual reproduction in the brown algae is by biflagellated juice spores and that are pear shaped which have two unequal literally attached flagella sexual reproduction may be isogamous anisogamous or oogamous union of gametes may takes place in the water or within the oogonium so which is oogamous species the gametes are pyriform means pear shaped and bear two laterally attached flagella the common forms are ectocarpus dictyota laminaria sargassum and fucus next rhodophycia so the members of rhodophycia are commonly called as red algae because of predominance of red pigment so r phycoerythrin in their body phyco means plant erythrin means red so red pigment in the plants majority of the red algae are marine 
with greater concentration found in the warmer areas they occur both well lighted regions close to the surface of water and also at great depths in the ocean where relatively little light will penetrate the red thalli of most of the red algae are multicellular some of them are some of them will have a complex body organization the food is stored as floridian starch which is very similar to amylopectin so and glycogen in structure so the red algae usually reproduce vegetatively by fragmentation they produce asexually by non motile spores and sexually by non motile so non motile gametes Uh, let's see the table once again let's complete this and to see the table sexual reproduction is i oogamous and accomplished by complex post fertilization development the common members are polysiphonia porphyria gracilaria and galidium other examples let's see the classification table here the classes are chlorophycia means common name is green algae so the name itself we have given green algae pheophycia brown algae rhodophycia red algae okay major pigment so if it is green in color mostly it will be a and b chlorophyll so like plants like major like bigger plants pheophycia a c and fucoxanthin because of this fucoxanthin only it is red in color brown sorry brown in color and red algae chlorophyll a and d so pheo erythrin phyco erythrin so because of that it is red in color food is stored so for chlorophyll mostly it is starch for brown algae mannitol laminarin and next for red algae floridian starch the cell wall is made up of for chlorophycia it is cellulose for pheophycia cellulose and algin for rhodophycia cellulose pectin and polysulfate esters flagellar number and position of insertions so if for chlorophycia the flagellar number is 2 to 8 equally arranged in the apical means on the top so in pheophycia the number of flagella is 2 unequal and laterally arranged means towards the side in rhodophycia the flagella is absent coming to the habitat chlorophycia is fresh water brackish water brackish water means like mud water very uh, like mud water salt water for pheophycia fresh water brack fresh water is very rare brackish water and salt water only for rhodophycia fresh water sometimes brackish water salt water in the most of the times so let's see the other classification of the kingdom plantae that is bryophytes bryophytes will include various mosses and liverworts and are found commonly growing in most moist shade areas in the hills okay here is the picture of bryophytes so first one is liverworts so here we have the small root like structures for attachment we call it as rhizoids and we have this gemma cup and this is archegoniophore or uh, anthridiophore archegoniophore is female and anthridiophore is male so this is the capsule so this is sporophyte gametophyte and sporophyte so this is anthridial branch these are the branches archegonial branch okay my dear friends let's continue with for the bryophytes bryophytes are also called amphibians of the plant kingdom so this is the very 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 important question what are the amphibians of plant kingdom it's bryophytes because these plants can live in soil but are dependent on water for sexual reproduction they usually occur in damp humid and shaded localities so we came algae to bryophytes means from water to amphibian stage so it's a form of phylogenetic evolution so the class so now we it is been confirm it that the classification is like phylogenetic water to amphibian means both land and water next land so water for sexual reproduction they also usually occur in damp humid and shaded localities they play an important role in plant succession on bare rocks and soil the plant body of bryophytes is more differentiated than that of algae it is a thallus like 
and prostate are erect prostate and erect and attaches to the substratum by unicellular or multicellular rhizoids these are very similar to the roots so bit, it is smaller because of that they called it as rhizoids they lack true roots stems or leaves they may possess a root like leaf like or stem like structures the main plant body of the bryophyte is haploid they produce gametes hence we call it as gametophyte the sex organ in the bryophyte are multicellular the male sex organ we call it as antheridium the they produce biflagellated anthrozoites the female sex organ is archegonium is flask shaped and produces a single cell so the anthrozoites are released into the water where they come in contact with archegonium so an anthrozoid fuses with the egg to form zygote so so the zygote do not undergo reduction division immediately because the plant body finally has to be uh, haploid so but the zygote which is formed is diploid so but immediately it will not undergo any reduction division nothing but meiosis they produce a multinucleated body which we call it as sporophyte so the sporophyte is not a free living but attached to photosynthetic gametophyte and derives the nourishment from it some cells of the sporophyte undergo reduction division to produce haploid spores these spores will germinate to produce gametophyte so the bryophytes in general are a little economic importance but some mosses will provide food for herbaceous mammals birds and other animals the species of sphagnum a moss provide a peat that have a long been used for fuel and as a packing material for transshipment of living material because of their capacity of holding the water mosses along with lichens are the first organism to colonize the rocks and hence there are the great ecological importance commercially these are not much important but ecologically they have the importance they decompose the rock making the substrate suitable for growth of higher plant since mosses form a dense mats on the soil they re- reduce the impact of falling rain and preventing the soil erosion so the bryophytes are divided into liverworts and mosses first we are, we will see about liverworts the liverworts grow usually in the moist shady habitats because it needs water for reproduction such as banks of streams marshy grounds damp soil bark of the tree and deep in the woods the plant body of the liverwort is thalloid it means plate like because of that they call it as thalloid marchantia so the marchantia thallus is dorsi ventral means flat in nature dorsi ventral means and closely pressed to the sub, uh, substrate means closely pressed it's like a plate like thing the leafy members have tiny leaf like appendages in two rows on the stem like structures so the asexual reproduction in liverworts takes place by fragmentation of thalli or by formation of specialized structures which we call it as gemma gemma means it's like a jewel so gemma are green multicellular asexual buds which develop in smaller receptacles called gemma cups located on the thalli the gemma become detached from the parent body and germinate for, to form a new individual during sexual reproduction the male and female sex organs are produced either on the same or on the different thalli so the sporophyte is is differentiated into a foot seta and capsule after meiosis the spores are produced within the capsule these spores will germinate to form a free living gametophytes here in when it comes to liverworts the sporophyte is dependent but the gametophyte is free living this is a point next mosses the predominant stage of the life cycle of mosses is gametophyte because it is independent which consists of two stages the first stage is protonema stage which develops directly from the spore it is a creeping green branched and frequently filamentous stage the second stage is leafy stage which develops from the secondary protonema as a lateral bud this consists of upright slender axis bearing a spirally arranged leaves they are attached to the soil through multicellular and branched rhizoids 
the stage bears the sex organs so the secondary only the second stage the leafy stage only will bear the sex organs first stage is protonema so the vegetative reproduction of mosses is by fragmentation and budding in the secondary protonema in sexual reproduction the sex organs are antheridia and archegonia are reproduced at the apex of the leafy shoots after fertilization the zygote develop into a sporophyte consisting of foot seta and capsule so the sporophyte in mosses is more elaborate than that of liverworts then than that in liverworts so the capsule contain the spores the spores are formed after the meiosis the mosses have an elaborate mechanism of spore disposal common example of mosses are funaria polytrichum and sphagnum okay so we have completed about the bryophytes so the classification of bryophytes consists of liverworts and mosses so which are amphibians in the plant kingdom let's see about pteridophytes pteridophytes will include horse tail and ferns pteridophytes are used for medicinal purposes as soil binders they are also frequently grown as ornamentals evolutionarily they are the first terrestrial plants to possess a vascular tissue so this is the very important characteristic feature of pteridophytes so the first terrestrial plant to possess the vascular tissue xylem and phloem is pteridophytes you shall study more about this tissue in chapter 6 the pteridophytes are used in cool damp and shady places through they some may flourish well in the sandy soil conditions also you may recall that in bryophytes the dominant phase the of the life cycle in bryophytes is gametophytic plant body because it lives independently the sporophyte will be dependent on the gametophyte for bryophytes but for however in pteridophytes the main plant body is sporophyte which, which is reverse quite reverse sporophyte which is differentiated into a true root stems and leaves so the true root stems and leaves are developed in pteridophytes so you can see that roots stems and leaves but they are like leaf root like stem like leaf like in bryophytes but here we have the true these organs possess a well differentiated vascular tissue a xylem and phloem so the leaves in the pteridophytes are small which we call it as microphylls and in salgenella or large macrophylls as in ferns the sporophytes bear sporangia that are subtended by leaf like appendages called sporophylls in some cases sporophylls may form distinct compact structures called strobili or cones so salaginella equestum the sporangia produces spores by meiosis in spore mother cell so the spores germinate to give rise to inconspicuous small but multicellular okay so this is the pteridophytes so the first is salaginella and the second is equestum so here we can see the stem leaf roots so this is not the case with bryophytes and here this is the strobilus node internode branch and this is the rhizome root like free living and mostly photosynthetic thalloid gametes will call prothallus the gametophytes require cool damp shady places to grow because of the specific restricted requirement and we need for water for fertilization the spread of living uh, pteridophytes is limited and restricted to narrow geographical regions the gametophyte bear male and female sex organs called antheridia and archegonia respectively water is required for the transfer of anthrozoites the male gametes are released from antheridia to the mouth of archegonia the fusion of male and fe- male gamete with the egg present in the archegonium results in the formation of zygote so thereafter produce a multicellular well differentiated sporophytic so in pteridophyte the sporophytic stage is dominant in bryophyte the gametophytic stage is dominant which is dominant phase of pteridophytes in majority of the pteridophytes all the spores are of similar kinds such plants we call it as homosporous genera like sal- salaginella salvinia which produce two kinds of spores that is macro and micro are known as heterospores the megaspores and microspores 
germinate and gives rise to male and female gametophyte always the megaspores will lead to the formation of female and microspores uh, male the female gametophyte in these plants are retained on the parent sporophyte for a variable periods the development of zygotes into young embryos takes place within the female gametophytes this event is a precursor to see habit considered as a important step in evolution okay and next the pteridophytes are further classified into four classes that is ciliopsida so p is silent here ciliopsida and lycopsida and in, in under lycopsida we have selaginella and lycopodium next p spinopsida under spinopsida we get equestum and tiropsida dryopterus teres and adiantum okay these are the examples and classification now we came to the next classification of kingdom plantae that is gymnosperms okay gymnosperms gymno means naked sperma means seeds are the plants in which the ovules are not enclosed by a ovary wall and are remained exposed because of that only the seeds are exposed both before and after fertilization the seeds that develop the post fertilization are not covered that are naked the gymnosperms will include the medium sized trees or tall trees and shrubs one of the gymnosperms the giant redwood squioca is one of the tallest tree species so squioya so this is also important question redwood tree the roots are generally tap roots tap roots means it will be like a cone like thing roots in some genera will have fungal association which will call it as mycorrhiza in a pinus plant while in some other cycas small specialized roots called coralloid roots which we associated with uh, nitrogen fixation cyanobacterium the stems are unbranched in cycas or branched in pinus and cedrus the leaves may be simple or compound in cycas the pennate leaves persist for a few years the leaves in the gymnosperms are well adapted to withstand the extremes of temperature humidity and wind in conifers the needle like leaves reduce the water surface so their thick cuticle means the layer outside the leaf we call it as cuticle and sunken stomata also reduce the water loss so that is for conifers next the gymnosperms are heterosporous they produce haploid microspores and megaspores so there are two different kinds of spores it will produce the two kinds of spores are produced within the sporangia that are born on sporophylls which are arranged spirally along the long axis to form a lax or a compact stroboli or cones the stroboli bearing microsporophylls and microsporangia are called microsporangiate or male stroboli the microspores develop into male gametophytic generation which is highly reduced and confined to only limited number of cells this reduced gametophyte we call it as pollen grain here the for gametophyte we call it as pollen grain but in bryophytes and pteridophytes there is a separately they will develop in like a plant body here we have only single cells like structure that is pollen grain this development of pollen grain takes place within the microsporangia the cone bearing the microsporophyll with ovules or micros megasporangia which we call it as megasporangiate or female stroboli the male or female cones or strobolies may be born on the same tree so pinus for example however in cycas male cones and female and megasporophylls are born on different trees like male plant and female plant the megaspore mother cell is differentiated from one of the cells of the new cellus the new cellus is protected by an envelope and a composite structure which we call it as ovule the ovules are born on megasporophylls which may cluster to form female cones the megaspore mother cell divides meiotically to form four megaspores one of the megaspore enclosed within the megasporangium develops into a multicellular female gametophyte that bear two or more archegonia or female sex organs the multicellular female gametophyte is also retained 
within megasporangium unlike the bryophytes and pteridophytes in gymnosperms the male and female gametophytes do not have an independent free living existence they remain within the sporangia retained on the sporophytes the pollen grain released from the microsporangium they are carried in the air currents so through air the pollination has to takes place and come in contact with the opening of the ovule it burn on the megasporophylls the pollen tube carrying the male gamete grows towards the archegonia in the ovule and discharges their contents near the mouth of archegonia following the fertilization so zygote will develop into an embryo and the ovules into seeds so these seeds are not covered so the, because of that we call it as gymnosperms so this is the plant of so ginkgo so this is ginkgo which have the dwarf shoot and the long shoot so this is the dwarf shoot and this is the long shoot and we have the seeds next finally we came to the last division of the classification that is angiosperms angio means case means covering sperms means seeds so covered seeds we call it as angiosperms unlike the gymnosperms where the ovules are naked in angiosperms or flowering plants the pollen grains and ovules are developed in specialized structures which we call it as flowers so there will be no flowers in gymnosperms in angiosperms the seeds are enclosed in fruits so the angiosperms are an exceptionally large group of plants occurring in wide range of habitats the range in size from small olfia to tall tree of eucalyptus over 100 meters they provide us food fodder fuel medicines and several other commercial important products they are divided into two classes that is dicotyledons and monocotyledons the dicotyledons are characterized by seeds having two cotyledons reticulate venation so reticulate means uh, net like veins on the leaves and tetramerous or pentamerous flowers means having five petals or four petals are having four or five members of flower whorls whorls means that whole floral uh, uh, petals and sepals we call it as floral whorls so the monocotyledons on the other hand are characterized by single cotyledon seeds parallel venation in leaves trimerous flowers means three petals or three sepals will be there in the floral whorls having three members in the each floral whorls the male sex organ in a flower is the stamen so if the flowers we call it as staminated flowers means it is male flower each stamen consists of slender filament with an anther at the tip so that bulbous structure on the tip we call it as anther within the anther the pollen mother cell divided by meiosis to produce microspore so which is a gametophytic stage so here also the sporophytic stage is very stable so the gametophytic stage is dependent on the sporophytic stage which matures into pollen grain the female sex organ in the flower is pistil so the flower is pistillated means female flower the pistil consists of an ovary at the base a long slender style and stigma stigma means that sticky part inside the ovary and ovules inside the ovary the ovules are present so generally each ovule has a megaspore megaspore mother cell that undergo meiosis to form four haploid megaspores three of them will degenerate and one divided to form the embryonic sac so each embryonic sac sac has three celled egg apparatus one egg cell and two synergids so synergids means friend so the on the either side it has the synergids and the center will have the egg cell and three antipodals antipodals quite opposite to this egg apparatus you will have the three antipodals and in the center two polar nuclei this will be discussed in detail in the next chapter so this is angio angiosperm flower you can see the flower a dico this is dicotyledon and this is monocotyledon dicotyledon will have four to five floral whorl and monocotyledon will have the three and you can see the parallel venation here in the monocotyledon in the dicotyledon you have the reticulate venation in the leaves nuclear will eventually fuse to produce a diploid secondary nucleus pollen grain of after dispersal from anther 
is carried by wind or various other agencies with the stigma of the pistil this is termed as pollination so when it comes to bryophytes pteridophytes it needs water for pollination uh, water not it is not a pollination union of male and female it needs water when it comes to gymnosperms it needs air more so when it comes to angiosperms it can be many type of pollen agents will be there so the pollen grains germinate on the stigma and resulting the pollen tube grow towards the tissue of the stigma and it will pass through the style and reaches the ovule the pollen tubes enter the embryonic sac where we have the two male gametes are discharged one of the male gametes will fuse with the egg cell which we call it a syngamy syngamy means actually a marriage so which is the true syngamy to form a zygote the other male gamete will fuse with diploid secondary nucleus to produce a triploid primary endospermic nucleus because in the center we have the two polar nucleus so two nuclei plus one male gamete will give us triploid 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 endospermic endospermic nucleus because of the occurrence of few fusions syngamy and couple fusion this event is termed as double fertilization an event unique to angiosperms that is only to angiosperms so the zygote developed in the into embryo with one or two cotyledons so if it is dicotyledon it will develop into two cotyledons if it is monocotyledon only one cotyledon and the primary endospermic nucleus develops into endosperm which provides the nourishment so endospermic nucleus is the nourishment of embryo nourishment to the developing embryo so synergic and antipodals will be generated after the fertilization during these events the ovule develops into seed at the and the ovaries will develop into fruit so the life cycle of angiosperm is shown here this picture so we have first when you are seeing this picture we divide the stages so we have the sporophytic sporophytic generation and gametophytic generation there will be an alteration of the generation sporophytic and gametophytic and one very very important thing in in this is when you are watching this picture which is more more pro dominant stage is sporophytic stage because the whole plant is sporophyte which is diploid in nature and coming to the gametophyte which is haploid in nature so how we are will see from the first initially will start with zygote so uh, sporophytic stage is diploid stage right so zygote which is a union of male and female gametes so that is formed a zygote so after zygote is a diploid so we are starting the sporophytic generation from a diploid cell which will divide further to form embryo and next this embryo will leads to seed when after the germination of the seed which will give birth to a plant which is sporophyte you see this whole plant is diploid whatever the structure you put everything is diploid and the development of sex or sex organs of the plant is flower so the flower flower is also sporophyte everywhere so later anther and we have this stigma stigma style pistil we have the anther and pistil so this anther is male and this stigma is female so stigma pistil and uh, pistil is female okay so uh, on this the mi microsporangium and megasporangium mother cells will get developed on differentiation so these are also diploid so when this undergoes the meiosis and that will develop a microscope so from the microsporangium the microscope so here the haploid cell was developed and that is a starting stage for gametophytic generation so microscope from the male megascope from the female okay microscope megascope this microscope will develop into pollen grain the megascope will develop into embryonic sac okay when the pollen is going to fall when the pollen is going to fall on the stigma the pollen tube will get developed from the male gametophyte so this is called this pollen grain we call it as male gametophyte and this embryonic sac is female gametophyte so which is very small stage when it comes to angiosperms so angiosperms as well as gymnosperms also but it will be a dominant for bryophytes uh, less dominant in pteridophytes so pollen tube and the pollen tube will reach till the till here till the microphyte and the two gametes will come to the meiosis and one gamete will fuse with the egg cell and one gamete will fuse with the central t cell so the whole thing is
group divides mitologically to form gametophytes. This dominant pho photosynthetic phase in such plants are free living gametophytes. So, this kind of life cycle is termed as haplontic. So, when we have a free living gametophyte, then we termed it as haplontic. Many algae, such as Volvox, Pyrogyrum, and some species of Chlamydomanus represent this pattern. Next, on the other extreme is the type where the diploid sporophyte is dominant, photosynthetic independent phase of the plant. So, the gametophytic phase is represented by single to few celled haploid, haploid gametophytes. This kind of life cycle is termed as diplontic, where the sporophyte is dominant, then we call it as diplontic. An alga fusca species represent this pattern. In addition, all seed bearing plants like angiosperm, gymnosperm follow this pattern with some variations, wherein the gametophytic phase is few to multi cell. So, this diplontic life cycle is majority for angiosperm, gymnosperm, and in some algae, fuscus, in um, the fuscus species only we can see this. So, that is a special exception in algae, that point is very important. Next, bryophytes and pteridophytes are interestingly will exhibit both haplodiplontic life cycle. Both phases are multicellular, however, they differ in their dominance. So, both are both will have an equal importance, both gametophytic and sporophytic. A dominant independent photosynthetic thalloid or erect phase is represented by a haploid gametophyte and it alternates with a short lived multicellular sporophyte totally or partially dependent on gametophytes for its anchorage and nutrition. All biophytes will represent this pattern because initially the gametophyte is independent. On the gametophyte, the sporophyte will depend. The diploid sporophyte is represented by dominant independent photosynthetic vascular plant body. It alternates with multicellular sporophyte, saprophytic and autotrophic independent but short lived haploid gametophyte. Such a pattern is known as haplodiplontic. So, both biophytes and bryophytes and pteridophytes are haplodiplontic. All pteridophytes will exhibit this pattern. Interestingly, while the most algal genera, genera are haplontic, some of them are ectocarpus, polysiphonia, kelps are haplodiplontic, fucus and algae is diplontic. So, these are some of the exceptions. This are very important to be noted. Okay, my dear friends, this is about the plant kingdom. So, I hope this video will be very helpful to you. But please follow the line to line and don't forget to keep the book beside you. When you are, uh, you just hear all the video and later you pass, if you want to pass, you pass in between. And if you have any doubt, you please note, note down point to the point. If you start from the day one, by studying like this way, then the exams will be very, very easy. There will be no any exam fever. Okay, my dear friends, if you like my video, like it, share to your friends, please do comment if any feedback is there and thank you very much.